ganja offerings, 24 karat coffins, and Van Halen's guitar. Here are some of the craziest things rock stars have taken to the grave. As the frontman of the iconic rock band Leonard Skinner, Ronnie Van Zant saw plenty of excitement in life, but his death, and weirdly his afterlife, have been even more chaotic. After their first two albums resulted in such massive hits, Free Bird and Sweet Home Alabama, things went horribly wrong for Leonard Skinner. In 1977, a plane carrying the band and others crashed into a swamp near Mississippi. You can't even realize, seeing one of these things on television, exactly what a crash of this magnitude looks like. Ronnie Van Zant was among the casualties. In an interview with News 4 Jax in 2022, Ronnie's widow, Judy Van Zant, explained how difficult his sudden and unexpected death made planning the funeral, explaining that emotions were running high and decisions had to be made quickly. However, one decision that was apparently easy to make was burying Ronnie with his favorite fishing pole. While this was a lovely touch and made sense since Ronnie loved to fish, people have since made it a little weird, with many claiming to have seen his ghost carrying the pole walking to Lake Delancey. One thing Ronnie Van Zant was almost certainly not buried with, however, was a Neil Young t-shirt. This urban legend probably began because many thought the two musicians were feuding due to Young's comments about the American South. When Ronnie Van Zant's grave was vandalized in 2000, it was speculated that those responsible were trying to find out if the myth was true or not. Dimebag Daryl Abbott of the band Pantera was, like many people, a massive fan of Van Halen. Even as Pantera became an iconic band in their own right, with Dimebag Daryl in the thick of it for two decades, he still talked constantly in interviews about how much he loved and respected his inspiration. Dimebag Daryl was tragically killed while performing in 2004. On December 8th, he was on a stage at a venue in Ohio when a member of the crowd jumped on the stage, pulled a gun, and shot him dead. The gunman killed three others before being shot by a police officer. Eddie Van Halen had only met Dimebag Daryl once, a few weeks before the latter died. But when the late singer's brother asked for a copy of the yellow and black bumblebee guitar Van Halen made famous to place in the coffin alongside him, the rocker did one better. When Van Halen arrived for the memorial, he was carrying the actual guitar from the 1970s. His reasoning? In his words, an original should have an original. Van Halen didn't place the guitar in the casket himself, though, saying he preferred to remember Dimebag Daryl as he was on the occasion that they had met. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, was a global phenomenon. However, during his last years, the conversation around Elvis turned to his physical appearance, which betrayed the fact that he was unwell. Still, his death in 1977 at the age of just 42 came as a shock to many. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Elvis in death was almost bigger than Elvis in life. By the time the king's body was returned to his Graceland estate from the hospital, thousands of people were already surrounding his home. Why, did, why go to all this trouble? Because we love Elvis. We still do. His father decided the public would be allowed to walk past Elvis's coffin, meaning he had to look his best. A BBC reporter was allowed in to see the body before everyone else, and decades later, he wrote in the Daily Mail that the rock star was dressed in a black suit and white cravat. The funeral director, Robert Kendall, later told the poignant story of how Elvis's daughter, the nine-year-old Lisa Marie, asked if she could place a thin bracelet in her father's coffin. He agreed and put it on Elvis's right wrist, as instructed by Lisa Marie. He then made sure to hide it under the rocker's sleeve cuff so that none of the thousands of fans who were about to walk past would be tempted to grab a memento. Bob Marley wasn't just an amazing musician. He was also arguably the first international superstar from a developing country. He and his band, The Whalers, sold tens of millions of albums and introduced reggae to the wider world. Exposure to Marley's music was also the first time many people learned about the Rastafarian religion. In 1977, doctors discovered a cancerous growth on Marley's toe. It was serious enough that they wanted to remove the toe in order to stop the cancer from spreading. But since Rastafarianism doesn't allow for amputation, Marley decided not to follow the advice. Sadly, the cancer spread, and he died in 1981 at the age of 36. A music journalist who attended Marley's state funeral in Jamaica wrote decades later that it was more like a concert than anything else. Many people and groups performed, including the Whalers. He also mentioned that a Bible and a guitar lay in the coffin with Marley. During the funeral, his widow also placed a cannabis stalk on his body. While to many the association is just a cliché, the Rastafarian religion believes the Bible commands them to smoke ganja and uses marijuana in a number of rituals. 
Some other sources have claimed that a soccer ball was also placed in Marley's coffin and that he was wearing a lion ring given to him by an Ethiopian prince. The members of KISS knew their fans would want to trumpet their membership in the KISS army even unto death, so the band did the logical thing and licensed a KISS coffin. They also double as coolers. When he unveiled this infamous piece of merch in 2001, Gene Simmons said, This is the ultimate KISS collectible. I love living, but this makes the alternative look pretty damn good. When he died in 2018, Vinnie Paul Abbott of the band Pantera was buried in one of these caskets. Even more meaningfully for the drummer and massive KISS fan, the coffin was a gift from Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. Nor was he the first member of Pantera or even the Abbott family to be buried in one of them. In 2004, Vinnie Paul's brother, Dimebag Darrell, had also been laid to rest in a KISS coffin. KISS guitarist Ace Fraley was not part of the coffin donation, and it came as quite a shock to him, especially since he was a participant in the funeral ceremony. Fraley told the Not Never Funny podcast, It was crazy because I had a speech planned, and it went over perfectly, and then we get out to the cemetery and he's in a KISS casket. Vinnie Paul got buried in a KISS casket, and I see my face on the casket, and it weirded me out. While the families of many celebrities go to great lengths to keep the funerals of their famous loved ones private, that was not the case with Chuck Berry. In fact, images of the iconic musician in his coffin at his 2017 funeral are widely available online. The major event saw 1,000 mourners attend, and seemingly all of them took photos. However, this does make it very easy to confirm that Berry's coffin was modified to hold one of his Gibson guitars. Attached to the interior of the coffin lid, the head of the red guitar pointed towards Berry's feet, and the lid was deep enough that the coffin could close with the guitar in it. At least some guitar fans were appalled that Berry was buried with the guitar, however. In a 2017 thread in the Lay Paul forums, one poster asked, Why bury him with a guitar at all? Any guitar associated with him for any extended time would fetch a nice premium at auction. Well, you can't please everyone. Chris Bell's name might not ring a bell to most people, but his band, Big Star, has achieved cult status since their 70s heyday. However, at the time, it wasn't clear they would ever make it big. After being signed to a small local label, they released their first LP, number one record, to rave reviews. Sadly, their success was hampered by distribution issues, a drug arrest that ended their tour, and limited radio play. While he would go on to release a successful solo album as well, Chris was deeply hurt by what seemed like the failure of his band. His older brother David Bell later said, Depression can come on very strongly at a time of loss, and it was almost my sense that he had put such an enormous amount of effort into this project that the album's failure was a crushing blow. In 1978, things were finally looking up and the album was being rediscovered. It was even re-released by a British record company. David remembered, Chris was over the moon about that, because the LP had imprinted on the back EMI Records, Hayes, Middlesex, England, just like all Beatles albums. But just after Christmas, Chris was involved in a single car accident and died on impact. He was 27. At his funeral, his love for the music he had worked so hard on was memorialized. His sister Sarah made sure someone brought a vinyl copy of number one record to place in the coffin. The death of another rock musician was disclosed today. Jim Morrison, 27 years old, lead singer of The Doors. Jim Morrison was the controversial frontman for The Doors, whose looks, talent, and gift for performance helped rocket the band to fame. But it wasn't all good times. After a difficult few years with numerous arrests, as well as an increasingly concerning drug problem, Morrison moved to Paris with his common-law wife, Pamela Corson, to try and get his life together. Infamously, a member of the 27 Club, Morrison died suddenly in his apartment in 1971. While his official cause of death was recorded as heart failure, there was no autopsy and it's widely believed that his drug use was the underlying cause. The rock star's unexpected death in a foreign country meant his burial was rushed and chaotic. While his gravesite in Paris's Père Lachaise Cemetery seems like a fancy, exclusive location today, at the time, its sole attractive quality was the fact that it was available. Jim was dressed in a baggy suit and laid out in the cheapest coffin available, even though it was too small. Before the coffin was closed forever, Corson says she found every photo of her and Morrison she had in their apartment and put them in with him. These days, Morrison's gravesite is one of the most visited in Père Lachaise. For two musical icons like James Brown and Michael Jackson, it's no surprise that they both went out the same way, with massive funerals that were just as much a show as anything else. Brown was the first of the two to die, passing away in 2006. 
His funeral took place in the famous Apollo Theater in New York City and saw thousands of mourners attend. This means Brown is another one of those celebrities whose corpses are plastered across the internet. The most shocking thing about those photos, however, might be the coffin that carried his body. It even has a name, the Promethean. Costing up to $30,000 in 2006 money, it was solid bronze and plated in 24 karat gold. One of the many celebrities who got to spend time with Brown's body before the larger ceremony was Michael Jackson. He was utterly transfixed. Funeral director Charles Reed later told the New York Daily News, He stood there, I guess an hour or so, just looking. He asked who requested the gold-plated casket. I said, well, it's the family's decision. He asked if that's something Mr. Brown wanted. I said, entertainers, they always say solid gold. Jackson must have taken this to heart. When he died in 2009, he too was buried in a Promethean coffin.